Okay, so chapter three, you're actually, I think, going to love chapter three. Chapter three is pretty darn easy. Chapter three is a lot about substituting variable numbers in for variables, okay? Because we know a variable just stands for a number. Um, they're going to give you that value. You have to plug it in. So a couple things that I just want to talk about with chapter three. So this first one here, if we did this example, and I'll zoom on in so that you can see it. It says d squared plus d plus one. Well, you have to find out what d is. Well, that's in your amp that's given to you, right? So remember that that's 10 squared, okay? And then that would be plus 10 plus one. So you just substitute them in. Why I'm bringing this up is because if this was a negative, that would turn into a positive because a negative times a negative turns into a positive. So that square, you have to remember, that's in parentheses, the squares on the outside. So like if that was, let's say it was B, if instead of D, B squared would be a negative two times a negative two, which would be a positive four. Okay, so I'm guessing that occurs in the other examples, but I just wanted to bring that one up. So remember 10 squared is 10 times 10. So that would be 100 plus 10 plus one. And remember when you're doing these, when you're plugging them in, you have to use order of operations. Okay, so that doesn't go away, never does. Um, and 100 plus 10 plus 1 is 111. Okay, so and remember if they're written right next to each other, that implies multiplication, just like the 5 times the C would imply multiplication. So I multiply those two, multiply those two, and then subtract because order of operations tells me I need to multiply before I subtract. So that's the first part, substituting variables in. The next part is about understanding what they mean when they're words. Um, so you've been doing this for a long time. It's not the first time you've seen it. So like if it's more, more than, plus, um, those are all adding words, okay? These are all subtracting words, multiplication words, and division words. Not very much for division. The thing that I'm going to point out to you is that you need to worry about subtraction because remember subtraction, you can't switch the order. And we do talk about properties in this one. That's called that commutative property. Commutative property works for addition and it works for multiplication. It does not work for subtraction. And if you think about that logically, that makes sense. I can say five minus three, but I can't say three minus five. Those are not the same thing, okay? Um, you're not going to get the same answer when you have subtraction, okay? So that is when you have to worry about the order. So that's why I start, like I highlighted those. So if you see anything that says less than, you have to switch the order. If you see left and if you see lower than, you need to switch the order, okay? So um, it says this month's rainfall is two inches lower than last month's of eight. So that's eight minus two, so you switch the order. So instead of saying two minus eight, switch that order because there was that than in there. Um, so than, less than, lower than, left. Those are the ones you have to worry about switching the order. Okay, um, so I'll have some IXL assigned for that. We're gonna go through the entire chapter three right now. I'm gonna assign you, I think I have seven IXLs that go with chapter three, and then I'll assign that chapter three test um, that comes from the packet and I'll upload the packet again. Um, and we won't worry about getting that done like right away. If you get it done before Thanksgiving, that's even better. Awesome, but if you don't, don't worry about it, okay? Um, I'd prefer if we went into right after and go with that like Monday right after, okay? Because that's kind of seems to be working for us. So if I don't have everything due until that next week, so then that gives me time to upload my next video and you time to get that all done. Now, if you get it done beforehand, awesome. That just means that you won't have something to do on Monday, which is perfectly fine, okay? Um, so then this is just more about words on 3.3. Three. Again, words, finding the words, finding the equations. This is about substituting them in. So like if they give you a um, equation of some sort, now they're telling you L is six, W is six, H is 11, you're plugging in those numbers, okay? Substituting them in, which we already talked about, okay? Um, expressions. So this is a little bit different because they're throwing stuff that you already talked about before. So remember roots, square roots, what number times itself gives you that. And then these lines are called absolute value. 
So remember, absolute value is the distance from zero. So absolute value answers are going to be positive when you're done. Um, so if I was doing this problem right here, like number three, it says a squared minus b. I have to do the stuff in the absolute value bars first. You kind of treat them like parentheses. Um, so what is a squared? Well, a is negative one. Oh, perfect example. So that's a negative one squared. So negative one needs to be in those parentheses. And then you're going to subtract b two. And then I'm going to take the absolute value. Well, negative one squared is a negative one times a negative one, which is a positive one. So I have positive one minus two. Well, what is one minus two? Well, that's a negative one. So I have the absolute value of negative one. And remember, absolute value is the distance from zero. So how many hops on a number line is negative one from zero? Well, that's one hop. So this answer is one, okay? You're gonna see some of those in your IXL. Properties, <clears throat> I'm going to attach a different slide that has the property video because I have that from when I teach it in class. So I'm gonna attach that, watch that video, and then I'll talk about all the different properties and a good way to like actually remember them. And then you're down, down to the review and to the test. So if you can get your IXL done, watch the other video about the properties, that would take care of chapter three. And then we'll do just like we did last week with chapter two tests. I'll do the chapter three test, which is that multiple choice test, has 16 questions and you will answer those. Okay, awesome. Thank you.